Hey, welcome back to uh, Let's Try Something that We Don't Know If It's Gonna Work or Not. Um, I have the, uh, here's the, the headstock or the peg head or, you know, whatever you want to call it, <clears throat> of the D28, and you may notice that it has some pretty significant grain, uh, in it, uh, that was not filled. Um, so we're going to adapt something, and we're going to see if it works, that, um, Robert O'Brien talked about on his uh, on his YouTube channel and that is pour filling with sawdust now he used uh, a one pound cut of shellac I don't have shellac I don't work with shellac um, but I do have some true oil is this gonna work I have no freaking clue um, it will be uh, entertaining to see oh do you hear it do you hear it the cat the jingle 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 He's not been around me the entire day. I am now convinced that that when he hears the shutter click, that's when he goes, oh, he needs me. He wants me. I should go get under his feet and bury my muzzle in his armpit while he's doing something because he needs my help. <laughs> so anyways, what I've done is I've made some bloodwood dust. And that sound like something out of a fairy tale. Um, and uh, I used it by just going to the, the belt sander and sanding the end grain. This part, uh, if you can. Oh, here, let's go like this. Here's my piece of wood and sanding this part of it. Well, trying not to get any of these big long fibers out of it, but just getting the very fine dust off of the, uh, uh, off the end of it there. And so let's, uh, let's charge us up here with a little bit of true oil. I'm going to try to go kind of light on this. I'm going to do this part just to kind of get it sitting on there. And I, and I want to try not to make a paste out of it. Try being the operative word here, I'm sure. This apparently just is an amazing technique to do with varnish. Uh, is it going to be amazing with true oil? Well, I don't know, kids. Um, we got a couple of things. We got one thing going against us. One, the just the grain lines on this um, on this particular piece of wood are pretty deep. We may have to do this a number of times. The big benefit in doing it with um, with the shellac is the darn near instantaneous drying time. I mean, it doesn't take any time at all. Um, yeah, see here is you see that right there. This is that little fiber stuff that we we're trying really hard to avoid. Um, yeah, drying time on, on that varnish concoction is just almost non-existent. Um, so we'll see. We're probably going to end up doing multiple coats of this. And then the plan is to put a coat on, let it dry, very light sanding, another coat, let it dry, very light sanding, etc., etc., etc. So 
So, uh, there we are, number one. Let's look back, we're um, six or seven coats uh, into this experiment. Um, as you can see, I think we're getting somewhere. Um, let us not be fooled. Are there easier ways to do this? Oh, yes. Um, and not just one, probably two or three different ways that I can kind of think of uh, that come to my mind. Um, does this utilize things that we have on hand here in the shop? Yes. Does it minimize our expenditure of funds which we don't have great piles of? Yes. Um, so, while this might not be the best solution, the most efficient solution, um, the most appealing uh, display-wise or appearance-wise solution, it might uh, just be the way um, to go, at least for this one, because um, should have been the tyranny of time got a hold of us um, on this one, and um, uh, hopefully uh, I won't have to do that anymore. Um, I'm just continuing to do the same thing over and over and over again. Um, powdered um, sanding dust, true oil on a rag, wipe it in, let it sit, um, let it dry. Um, three or four hours or so is what I'm doing. Uh, and then a very light sanding with uh, some 220. Uh, and I don't wipe the dust off of it, the sanding dust that comes up, um, and then I sprinkle a little more, a little more true oil, on and on and on. That's, that's what we're doing. Um, this, and then at the same time, right at the end, I just give this a little bitty wipe um, with the leftovers that are usually on the top of this. So this is coming along as well. So we're going to keep, keep doing what we're doing. All right. Um, yeah, I don't think we did too bad on this one. Um, I just cleaned um, both the truss rod cover and the uh, um, and the headstock uh, with some naphtha. I de-dusted them, um, and so now it's just going to be straight true oil application. Um, Kind of eager to see what this is going to look like once we start laying just the plain true oil on it. Um, because there's a difference. Um, I can definitely tell a difference. Oh, and this has been this has been sanded too. Um, just lightly sanded to get the surface uh, down. Um, but yeah, I can you can already tell that it is not nearly as surfacey. Guys, that's a bad word. Um, the texture's gone. That we had that might need to be sanded a little bit. Let's see. Just going to treat this like a first, like a first time, a first coat, um, just because of the added sawdust. It's 
now in there is kind of soaking up this stuff. You can see there's different areas that are soaking the true oil up more than others. So we're just going to keep laying it on there until it stops. And then we're back to just normal everyday true oil operations. I think this worked out actually really good. Um, it was kind of time consuming because, um, like I said, I just did this over the course of like three days um, I would just come in every couple of hours and, uh, and do the treatment Yeah. Alrighty, it's better. Um, but now the nice thing is, 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 um, we can start getting the rest of the guitar in. Because now I'm not doing like dust flying up through the air and stuff. So we'll go ahead and we'll get the uh, we'll get the rest of the guitar prepped up now, and then we can just have at it.